Okay, so now, uh, now we try to finish the lecture in half an hour, hopefully. Okay, so we will leave the next uh, uh, chapter into next week. So uh, we just uh, talked about the operation mode, two different operation modes. One is uh, regarding the constant uh, charge mode. The other one is constant voltage mode. So remember, in constant charge mode, you do the gap closing, uh, there's a linear force. There's a constant, sorry, constant force. Okay, in the constant charge mode, you move the gap closing uh, direction. There's a constant force. But in the constant voltage mode, you move laterally. There's a constant force. It's different. Okay, uh, because a uh, constant charge mode is not easy to operate because uh, the charge is easy to leak out. So that's why we usually apply constant voltage mode more than constant charge mode. For constant voltage mode, we connect the battery always onto the capacitor, okay? So in that case, we have a linear, uh, the constant force in the lateral uh, movement direction of the actuator. So that's the basic idea of the contrap actuator. So now we go to the contrap actuator. So in the contrap actuator, uh, actually is a very classical and also important actuator, which has been invented uh, like 20 years ago. And uh, the contrap uh, actuator uh, actually is a linear motion actuator. Uh, remember, the first actuator, uh, the main actuator is not a, a contrap actuator. It's an electrostatic motor. So electrostatic motor gives you a rotational uh, movement. But the question is, uh, it's not easy to extract the, the motion. Okay, the actuation from the rotational movement. So that's why people think uh, maybe we can consider the other way to, uh, to provide the force. Uh, so like uh, our uh, internal combustion engine, uh, engine. So if we can give the back and the force movement, the back and the force movement also can be transferred into a linear translation later on. So that's why people think of the, uh, another configuration of uh, uh, the contrap actuator. So the counter drive actuator uh, is, uh, looks like this, it's top view. Uh, so you can see several uh, structures here. First is the con aerial. The con aerial we have, a, uh, for example, left hand side is a stator, uh, is a con structure here, but those con are connected to the stator and the, the, the anchor is uh, um, keep on, on, on the surface without the movement. So the other sides of the con, uh, they can move freely, okay, along the uh, horizontal direction, the x direction. So the con drive has been designed uh, symmetry in symmetry. So left hand side we have a one pair of the con drive, on the right hand side we have another pair, okay. So in this case, when we apply potential on left hand side, the con uh, the con can be attracted. Uh, along the direction, uh, go inner into the left hand side. Uh, so, similarly, if we apply potential on the other side, the con can go to the right hand side. So, you can uh, give the potential alter alternatively to the left hand side, right hand side, so the con can move uh, back and forth uh, in a horizontal direction, like this. Okay? So, that's a basic idea. And the, to support this con to move freely, actually we need a spring, cons, a spring system, okay? So uh, the center part corresponding to the uh, spring system, the spring is anchored at the center here, okay? So we will talk, uh, talk about more detail of the spring system. So the, the, in addition to this uh, fixed area, so the all other areas, you, you, you look at the light colored areas, uh, those areas are floating on the surface, above the surface, okay? There's no contact on the surface for those light uh, area. Only for the dark area here, these two areas are the anchor of the whole comb structure uh, to the ground, okay? So the center part can move freely and they use the cantilever here, four cantilever here as a spring to suspend, okay, the structure to move freely above the surface, okay? So, um, so this is a basic structure. So now we consider first 
Uh, the operation mode is a lateral driven. That means the, the count will move laterally. Okay. Not the gap closing, the laterally movement. Okay. So uh, so for lateral driven, so we can uh, have the count uh, simplify into this uh, uh, kind of a structure here. So similar to the two plate, two uh, flat plate. So the count drive, we still can look uh, into the structure and uh, uh, consider the side wall area as a two flat, okay, two flat plate, okay. So with the uh, width of W and the overlap distance X and the gap Z, because we are driving then uh, in the lateral direction. So we keep the top distance Z and the bottom distance Z are the same, okay. So we want to move this uh, actuator laterally in this direction. So we need to consider to uh, support this uh, moving part with a very uh, lightly connected uh, cons uh, the spring on this direction and a heavy uh, spring on the other direction. That means we allow the cam to move in the horizontal direction, not in the vertical direction. Okay? So the heavier uh, spring here means that we uh, give a strong force here. So when the cam want to move in the vertical direction, the spring will give a uh, opposite force to stop the movement, okay, to restrict the movement. However, in the lateral direction, we have a, a, a lighter uh, spring connect here. So when there's a force applied onto the finger here, the spring won't give a large force. So the uh, structure can be uh, ready to move easily in the horizontal direction. Okay, that's the idea. So because of the structure is similar to the structure we just mentioned before, so you just plug into the force equation directly for lateral driven um, uh, actuator, the electrostatic actuator. Because uh, we have uh, uh, n pairs uh, of this kind of you know, uh, electrostatic gap. So in addition uh, to the original uh, equation, we put the number n here. That means we have n gaps over here, provides uh, n times of the force, okay? So that means uh, if you want to increase the force, uh, final force of a count drive, you can increase the number of pairs, of the capacitor pairs, okay? To increase, in order to increase the force. So in addition to um, increase the pairs, look into the equation, you also uh, can, by changing the structure, uh, to increase the force as well. For example, it can reduce the width. Uh, sorry, increase the width. So increase the width means you need to make a high aspiration structure, very thick calm, okay? To increase the uh, width and to increase the overlap uh, surface area. Another thing you can do is by uh, reducing the gap distance. So make the distance smaller, you also can increase the force. Okay, so in addition to increase the, uh, the pair, the numbers of pair, increase the, the thickness, reduce the gap, <coughs> are the two, uh, two other keys to increase the force. Okay, so there's a count drive. So uh, the count drive so for linear lateral driven uh, can give you uh, basically large displacement because um, the count can go all the way to the end. So this is a long distance you can go, okay? This is the first good things. The second good things are uh, you can have a linear, uh, uh, linear force, constant force, sorry, constant force. So uh, the force does not change, okay? No matter you are in this position or in the end position, the force are the same. It's a constant force. So if the force is constant, it's easy for you to design, okay? Uh, no matter how it go, where it go, so the, the force is always constant. However, uh, the force is small. When we do the calculation, you can find out. The force is all roughly in micro-Newton range. Uh, in our final project, we want you to design the force larger than um, 10 micro-Newton or milli-Newton, even milli-Newton range. It's quite large, so it's not possible to using only count drive, one pair of count drive to achieve that. So you definitely need to consider a different way to increase the force. Otherwise the final project becomes too easy for you. Okay. 
So, so the force is small. So now we consider the other way to drive this uh, actuator. We call the gap closing. So for the gap, gap closing driven, now we consider to uh, arrange the center, you know, the, the, the other side of the cam, a little bit closer to one uh, of the electrodes, the stator. For example, we, we keep the Z smaller than Y here, okay? So now when you apply a uh, potential between them and then using the spring to constrain the movement of the cone to the horizontal direction, but using the lighter spring to allow the movement in the Y direction, in the, uh, sorry, in the vertical direction. So now, uh, according to the attraction force between these two parts, so the, uh, the cone can move up easier than move down. Okay, you got large force here. So it can boom up easier than move down. So the equation will be like this. Because you have a two folds, one is from the top, one is from the bottom. Okay. So you got the top folds uh, with the equation here. So the, the, uh, the capacitor uh, is over Z, uh, the, the other one is over Y. Okay, so total force will be these two folds, uh, uh, the top, the top force, the um, uh, minus the, uh, the button force. So you, you end up got the equation, two equation like this. For the gap closing, uh, actually the force is not linear, not constant, it's linear force. It's inversely proportional to the uh, distance, the gap square, okay. So now you got the two equation, the top force and the minus the, the button force. And because um, uh, if you, we, we design uh, the gap, uh, the bottom gap is uh, three times larger than the top gap. So after square, uh, the second force will be 10 times smaller than the first one. So in this case, we can neglect the second force, the bottom force, because it's uh, far away, okay? After square, uh, they become even smaller, the force, the 10 times smaller. So now we consider only the force from the top gap here. The button is too small. The force is too small, so we ne neglect the force. So now we uh, leave only the, 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 the final equation with the top gap here. So now we consider the equation here. So the force is the linear force, okay? So it is inversely proportional to the z squared. So if the z becomes small, the force becomes very large, okay? So compared to the constant, uh, sorry, um, the, the literal driven mode, the gap closing mode can give you a uh, linear force, but the force is larger, a little bit larger, okay? It depends on the gap you design. However, because uh, uh, you have a, a small gap here, so the movement for the um, actuator can be uh, constrained by the distance here. So the distance, the displacement can be very small, yeah. So the gap closing might give you a, a little bit larger force, however, the displacement is small. So compared to the literal driven, literal driven can give you a large displacement, a smaller force, because the force is always constant, never change. But for gap closing, when the gap becomes smaller, you can have a larger force. Okay, but the distance is quite small. So one advantage is that the others are uh, drawback. <laughs> yeah, so you need to compromise or you need to trade off. Otherwise, you, you cannot have both of them at the same time. But in the final project, I want you to, to achieve both of that at the same time, long distance and large force at the same time. So if you consider only one of them is not possible to achieve that. <laughs> so you need to think that smartly. Yeah, how to do that? I don't know. Yeah, in your final project, you will find out. Okay, so to uh, just give you some hint, okay, to get some uh, large force, you can consider several things. The first one, the gap. Uh, the gap closer, um, you know, the gap you need to design and the fabricate closer, smaller gap, I mean. But for smaller gap, that means you need to have a better lithography resolution. Consider uh, our design rule is only three micron. Actually, three micron actually is not small enough. Something is pretty large, actually. So the uh, so you want to get a large force edge. Sometimes we need to consider the gap is smaller than one micron, even a couple hundred nanometer. 
that will be extremely hard, especially if you want to make the highest ratio structure. It's not easy at all. Uh, but that's the one direction you can consider. The second one is consider higher aspect ratio. That means uh, a thicker structure. So you got a more overlap surface area. Okay? But if you want to combine these two together, it will become extremely hard because uh, you want to have a high aspect ratio uh, structure and also very small nano uh, gap, gap. They will become very, very difficult. So that's why people consider a, a, a interesting way. So the originally, uh, they, they want to make a smaller gap, but fabrication is difficult. So originally, they don't fabricate a, a large, you know, small gap structure. So structure, uh, also very, uh, the gap is also very large. But after the fabrication, they make this part a little bit larger than uh, this part. So when, after the fabrication, they can stick this structure into the small gap here. Uh, so in that case, they can reduce the overlap gap between the uh, actuator and the stator much smaller. Or you know you have a three micron design rule here, right? But you, you design this part a little bit larger than this part. So you can make the, after the overlap, the gap will become like 100 nanometer, for example. Uh, so this is not based on fabrication. It's based on, after fabrication, we do assembly, very accurate assembly. So when, after the assembly, push this part into this region, we got a much smaller gap. Okay, that's another smart idea. Okay, so that's what we call the spatial, the initial fixing technique. So after we stick uh, the, this part into the, uh, the, 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 uh, the cavity here, then we will fix the structure, uh, become the new original position. So the attrition will start in from some position here and go forward. Okay? So the, the structure will never come back to the original position because uh, after we stick uh, the part, part of this uh, structure here in and we fix the structure at uh, some kind of position. Okay? And another thing is that you can try to uh, consider to increase the area, overlap area, because of the capacitor depends on the, the overlap area. If you have a more overlap area, the force can be larger. So one way to increase the surface area is by increase the, uh, you know, the surface roughness. So make the structure like a corrugated structure. They increase the roughness and increase the surface area overlap. Also increase the increase the force, and to increase the area, not only to make the surface more rough, but also you can uh, have another portion um, to have the the, uh, the capacitor not only on the sides, but all the way surrounding the whole you know inner structure. So you will increase the uh, overlap area not only on the side but on the top and the bottom as well. Okay, so you made the structure, the count structure, be embraced inside another stator structure. Okay, originally we we count on only the side wall, right, to form capacitor. Now you have uh, the capacitor all around the actuator, so you got a more surface area, you got a higher force. Okay, do you understand? Okay, the last thing is the most interesting but not easy to understand thing is by using different method because um, currently, the uh, count drive we're using is steady force to attract uh, the count laterally to make the movement. And uh, when, uh, when we release the steady force, the count drive will come back by the spring. Okay, so, uh, the spring usually uh, is designed not very strong in order to um, to have a movement easily by the static force. Another thinking is um, uh, if we want to use in the spring constant to provide large force to pull back the, the, the structure, we can consider not only the spring constant pulling back uh, effect, we can consider another design structure, it's like the buckling structure. The buckling structure is looked like this. So the, uh, uh, the structures look like a, um, you know, uh, one size uh, shorter than the other size. So when we apply uh, the electricity force uh, between the structure and the button surface, 
the force will push the structure down. When we push the structure down, uh, this part will go forward a little bit, right? Go forward a little bit. And uh, when we have this kind of structure go forward a little bit, so the counter force here and the button here is different. The counter force uh, at the front is higher than the counter force at the bottom, the friction force at the bottom. So when we release the structure, the structure will go forward a little bit. Because um, when we uh, release the structure, the structure will recover it back to original uh, position. Uh, this uh, force is based on the buckling force. The buckling force is always uh, usually larger than the spring you know, deformation force. So they can give a large force to coming back. Okay. So you can uh, try to um, attract it down, and when it comes it back, it will go forward. Attract down, come, for, come back, and go forward. So you can keep doing this, move the structure, go forward, uh, step by step. So in this case, you got a large force and a long distance travel at the same time. Oh, you got some answer. Okay, but, but this is not re the only answer. There's only one kind of uh, actuator you can design and try to solve the problem. You want to have a large force and also long distance travel at the same time. Okay, for long distance, it's, it's not easy to only uh, do the actuation once to get a long distance. Sometimes we need to accumulate many steps for long distance. So you can consider, try to design a very strong uh, actuator first, then move them step by step uh, to accumulate the, 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 the actuation to a long distance. So now you can have both of them achieve at the same time. Okay, so that's a way to consider. And uh, uh, so the, the first one is to, to help you to get a larger force. The second one you can consider to get a larger displacement. Uh, for larger displacement and also um, uh, with a little bit of higher force, you can consider the movement of plate is not only lateral driven, you can go the gap closing at the same time. So you can connect the um, structure like this. So when you give the, uh, the static force between the plate here and the, the substrate, the force will not uh, drive uh, then closer, but also will move in this direction. So the movement here in this direction can give a long distance movement, but the force here can, because you get closing, the force can give a, a bit larger force. So maybe by using this, you can combine uh, a little bit larger displacement and also re uh, relevantly larger force at the same time. Okay? There's a larger lateral driven plus gap closing together. Another interesting thing by inch one, uh, inch one um, actuation uh, is quite complex. Actually, the, for the inch one actuation, actually, you need to apply uh, eight, uh, four pairs of actuators here. Each pair actuator have some kind of graber. So you can use in the first uh, pair of a graber to grab the, the pole to push it forward, then release the pole, then using the uh, second pair to grab the pole and push forward. So you can push it, the, the pole forward, um, um, take turn. So using the first pair first, then second pair, then first pair, and second pair, they take turn. So you can move the poles in one direction for long distance. Okay, so that's by inch one actuation. Okay, and also you can consider to transform uh, the rotational, uh, the tra transverse, the back and forth uh, motion into the rotational motion. Then using the rotational motion uh, by using the gear set like we just mentioned before. Uh, each stroke, stroke of the actuation is pretty short. However, if you can uh, transform, transverse the, this kind of uh, short st stroke actuation into the direction, into a rotational uh, rotational mode, uh, the rotational mode can further <coughs> be translated into the translation uh, um, uh, actuation. So in that case, uh, the accumulation of the rotation can give a long distance actuation as well. Okay, like the mirror, mirror set we, we, we mentioned before. There's another thing you can consider. Okay, so after that, now we oh, consider the spring 
system. Uh, still a lot of things to do. I think it's too much for the day already. <laughs> Maybe we'll keep the spring system next time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, we, we, we need to spend a lot, uh, actually one hour for, for the spring system and the rest of the, the stress condition. So maybe we stop here. Yeah, just let you understand some basic idea. Then we continue on next time. Okay. So any question regarding today's lecture? Okay, if no, we stop our, our lecture here and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.